Hey guys, Frank here, your virtual general aviation aviator. And today I am back in, well, I'm in the, um, the DA-62. Uh, now this one, this particular one is Microsoft Flight Sim, and I just couldn't help but spun in, um, well, let the opening screen play because this picture here looks photorealistic. I mean, it's absolutely gorgeous, uh, which is the one thing that I can say that I like, that I really, really like about Microsoft Flight Sim. All right, so um, my plan today is to fly the DA-62 from LaGrange, Georgia to uh, Peachtree DeKalb, and I'm going to follow that up with a flight, um, with a similar flight in the DA-62 uh, using X-Plane. Um, the planned altitude is 3,500 feet, so I know there won't be any contests in the scenery uh, that we will observe along the way, but um, but I thought it might just be an interesting uh, flight, and it would give us a chance to compare the two aircraft. Um, now, in fairness, th this is a Microsoft default aircraft, and I really have see, have I ever flown this. I don't think I've really ever flown this, so um, so the my experience is with the X-Plane version. Anyway, let's uh, let's see if we can't get this guy started and get off. Now this one doesn't have uh, this is not the a series that doesn't have a cap system. Um, all right, so I guess I need to latch that door. Is that what that means? I can't tell what's operable and what's not. Okay, um, so, uh, fear control, and I guess we hit this one, okay, and, and, see if we, all right, and, just getting the hang of these here. All right, so I'm not sure that, um, yeah, so. Um, anyway, so let's turn our fuel on. Both, on both sides. And as customer, uh, we'll start the right side first. We're not going through checklists or anything like that. All right, let's get our mouse to turn on. And doesn't look like the buttons on the alpha yoke is gonna work. Let's see if it, if the lights work. Okay, the lights seem to work, even though it's got some delay. Um, so we'll go ahead and turn our position light on. And strobes kind of let people know that we're about to start the props and got a master on okay so let's turn our right fuel pump actually we got master on the left side master on the right side and parking brake is set all right, that's always a good thing to check. And don't know the state of chucks. Um, chocks, I mean. Okay, don't look like getting the chocks on. All right, and don't have any keys set up for quick looks. Um, but I wanna go ahead and clear both of those sides. All right, okay, let's turn that master on. <laughs> yeah, uh, okay, that's better. All right, and soft key here so we can get our engine parameters. All right, so that pump is on. Um, so let's go ahead and start that right engine. Thought I clicked that. 
There we go. So now I got fuel flow and I got a good start on the right engine. Trying to left pump on. The, um, engine master is on. And let's start this left engine. All right. So I got both engines started. And I'm going to turn the pedo heat off on just to get rid of this message. Well, it won't let me. So now I got a caution. And I guess I turn the fuel pumps off at this point. I got even fuel flows. And those are pulled back to idle. And let me lock these so that I don't accidentally turn off fuel in the flight. I think that's what those are for. Alright. So, looks like we've got good starts. Um, getting this guy started seems to be really easy. And let's not even deal with ATC. Um, X the the um, transponder. Let's go ahead and turn it to on. Uh, I don't know if it automatically will switch to altitude reporting on takeoff. Um, our plan is to fly is to fly 3,500 feet. So let's dial in 3,500 feet. Find the altitude. Find the autopilot. And don't seem to be to zoom in. Instrument lights, flood lights. Um, it's hard to read that. And another caution. Low voltage and pito, pito heat off. Uh, AV master look like it's off. So yeah, let's turn that on. You know, heat still won't come on. Not sure why. Uh, I wonder if it's got anything to do with the ECU. I shouldn't. Alternators. Okay, well, I won't worry about it. It's not cold enough to actually need it. And we won't be high enough where we where we will run into the possibility of ice and the pedal too. Um, let's see. Uh, look, still looking for autopilot. So it comes now and. Pilot something. I uh, can't quite read that. All right. And well, let's get our Aedas for Lagrange. Let's get it from Sky Vector. And the Grinch. Uh, let's see. Radio weather A A was one twenty six point three two. So let's uh, let's go with it.
126. Three, two. Let's go up. That might be a little faster. So that's one, two, three, three, one. 3, 1.5, 3, 2, 3, 3, 3, 2, 5, 3, 2, 5. So that's what we want. Let's flip that in and turn on COM 2. Turn it off. Trying to turn COM2 off now. And come on. This is why I don't fly this this sim very much. Um, so I'm clicking COM2. And it's not clicking off. So I'm just having to put in a dummy station. Okay, I have to click dump, click come one mic. I don't know what this thing is doing. Um, but okay. All right. Now come one. Okay. Now, now, I can, now I got it off. Okay. So it may have been user error. I don't know. Um. All right. So let's. Um. But I know I don't have those issues in X plane. If I click something, if I, if I try to toggle, I can toggle come too just by clicking it um, I guess you can't toggle these okay so live and learn all right and so when some um, 294 at 7 and what runways do we have good question what runways do we have? Runway 3, 1, and 3. 13 and 31. And winds are 290. So winds are over here. Right here. So 31 is the runway that we need. All right. So let's do 31. All right, so get rid of this again. And and let's see if we can't see 31 on this guy. Range. Tight click spots here. All right, so I should be able to make a left turn and then another, then a, then a right turn for 31. All right, so let's release our brake. And I saw the brakes before brakes are released. 
and clear left, clear right, and watch that truck. It's a shame they hit a fuel truck. And and these uh, these marshals tend to get chopped down all the time. All right, so this is where we're gonna take a. Light 31, I need to take a left turn. I thought, uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I said, a left turn. Yep. Hmm. Actually, looking at the uh, diagram, look like I turned right. Huh. So that is that backwards? How is it me? Well, it is what it is, right? As long as we get to 31. All right, and so I'm holding short runway 31. This is uh. A golf airport. I don't think it has a tower. Um, so let's just take the runway in because we're more interested in the way that she flies. All right, let's drop um, a notch of flaps. All right, let's take off. That was the takeoff. And landing lights come on. Strobe stays on. And taxi lights can come off, which I didn't manage the lights well. Alright. And go to takeoff power. I think it's four power in this case. Rotated 80. 80. Positive rate, tap the brake. Yeah. Fifteen flaps up. And let's turn nav on. Ah, uh, that's just flipping me back and forth. Ah, uh, shoot. Oh, here's my autopilot. Duh. Autopilot can come on. on nav 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 I still got ROL so let me uh, let me make that turn manually autopilot I just turn autopilot off. Let's see if the pedo heat will operate now. No. All right, flight director. Oh man, so. Flying here. 
Alright, let's see if we can get it trimmed. I didn't check the trim before I took took off, so that was that's on me. Okay, autopilot. Engine autopilot, and then, and then I'm pretty sure this is nav. Let's try ahead and feel. Okay, I think I know what's wrong. Okay, uh, back. See, yeah, to um, I need to have that on GPS, right? GPS, and then. Nav. Nav. So this says GPS, like that shit needs. Let me put that head. Hmm. Oh. All right. Autopilot off. Okay. Autopilot off. What the hell happened? Autopilot is off. It's blinking red, so I think that means it's off. Shoot. Gain some altitude. Drill out some so I can see. Hopefully, where the devil I'm at. I don't even think I don't even want to repost this um, this video now. But I may post it anyway just to show you guys how first why didn't why I this pilot tend to not fly Microsoft Flight Sim. I mean, it's a gorgeous flight simulator. Tape, ain't no doubt about that. But I don't know why I'm having all these issues. Right now, I'm hand flying it. I'm trying to trim it. So I'm going to have to use the stick to trim. Apparently, apparently my alpha yoke is not trimming it. So, pick a spot to fly to off the nose, and I don't see anything that I can pick, except for this, maybe this dark spot. Maybe I can fly to this spot here and that would keep me somewhat on track. And I'm 
lose an altitude. because I can't get my autopilot to behave, then that's um, keeping me from being able to really look and enjoy the scenery. If I can get on this magenta line, I think all of this stuff would line up. Let's try it now. The flight won't be 87 miles. Uh, let me, I'm still not really gaining any real altitude. Um, so go down here, look at my stick, trim up just a touch. And yeah, I don't see this. I don't see that need aligning as a uh, as a uh, align. Flaps are up, gear is up. Oh. And don't need to turn. Let's see if I can correct for that. Hmm. So, there's my head, and okay, that one and this one look like they may do the same thing. Uh, so, let's go AP, head, and AP, whoa. Okay, yeah, we don't. Why is that autopilot? Let's see. So, do I have my altitude? Yeah, got it positive 3,500 feet. Did you guys see that when I gauged the altitude, she pitched down real hard. Um, vertical speed. And out select. Vertical speed, zero feet per minute right now. Oh. 
another thing with um, with X Plane, I didn't have to do a bunch of tweaking to get stuff to work correctly. Now I'm assuming I'm entering the Atlanta metro area because I'm starting to see um, some stuff, uh, at least the Atlanta suburbs, Atlanta suburbia. Zero feet per minute. Let's see. Maybe I can use that the Bravo to. All right. So I got that set at a thousand feet. Engage the autopilot. Engaging autopilot. Okay, it's turning to my head and. doing that and let's make sure it's going to capture uh, so I need to hit out out or maybe I didn't need to hit out uh, 35 vertical speed Okay, so it's on out S, so I think that means it auto capture. And it's taking to get up to 35. And I don't know where the Charlie at, I mean, where the Bravo at. For the purpose of purposes of this flight we're just gonna follow the line at whatever altitude we can so right now I got the the autopilots on and it's set for wings level let me try turning the head and bug back on. Okay, so I'm flying. It's going to fly the head. Autopilot vertical speed, 600 feet per minute, and it should capture our 35. And distance to Peachtree, I believe, Yeah, it's going to capture the 35 because it's blinking, and I can see the um, the capture bug coming down. Now, are we 24 miles from a waypoint, or let's see, let me swing this head above. Back to the right a little bit. <laughs> so, what are we 24 miles away from? That's Can you guys read that? I think we 13, ah shoot.
28 and 13 and 16. So I think we're 13 miles from Atlanta plus 16 miles from Peachtree. Which gives us about 25 miles to the destination. I don't know why this waypoint is not showing up here. And but once we get to Atlanta, then we'll we just fly. Actually, we're just going to continue flying by the seat of our pants. That's exactly what we're doing here. Uh, let's see. Flight plan. So let's see what we got out the window here. Welcome to Atlanta, guys. And I, I think we're gonna fly right over Hartsfield. Um, now I've got live traffic turned on. Um, I think I got the. Um, labels turn off and somewhere in control so there ought to be some traffic out there somewhere because I do have live traffic turned on Nice scenery. Really nice scenery. If I was more patient, I would fly this, this, this a little bit more than I do. Um, but honestly, I'm just not that patient. Okay, so we like we're averaging about uh, 140 knots indicated. And hold on just for a second. Go to dog. All right, yeah, that is hot hearts field that we're getting ready to fly over. Shit, I don't think we'll be able to see it from the cockpit at this point. Here we can. Cool. I said we had live traffic, but I don't see, I should be able to see traffic at Hartsville. Um, bear with me guys, I'm going to check, welcome, custom to bar, map, travel to, objectives, nav mark, fuel, basic controls, checklist, camera, GC flight assist. All right, so I'm gonna have to go all the way out here. Uh, escape and hot dog. I will have to go all the way out to the main menu. Test your skills, general options, control options, assistant options. 
aircraft systems. Huh. Yeah, I would have to go out, I believe, to the main menu. Which, yeah. Which ain't worth it. But, I thought I could... I thought I could... Um, weather. Live weather. Which is correct. Got some, uh -oh. It's got some markers there. Definitely in the world by myself. He does some part there, craft. But it's too many of you guys enjoying this for it to be all the sims, so you know I've got to say a lot of it must be the pilot. All right, so I should have just made my turn to that's right, I'm not flying. The nav. Let me try nav again. Okay, GPS. And it looks like it's turning on course. So it looks like the nav did engage. I got nine miles to my destination. So I'm going to pull my power back and disengage my autopilot. And drop my nose. Turn my flight director off. Flight director won't go off. <laughs> yeah. FD. All right. So again. All right. So. Yeah, I did have the autopilot turned off, but I can't turn off the flight director. All right, so let's, let's uh, prepare for landing. So let's get down. I don't know what altitude I need to be in, be at, but I am flying by the seat of my pants, so. Hopefully we can see that airport. I think I got it up here. And Landing lights come on. Gas on the carriage.
mixture and props is not a concern. And generally, you, most pilots don't drop the undercarriage until, um, until they're ready for that first notch of flaps. Raise that on the carriage. Look like, look like I may be I'm not sure. I'm not sure what I'm doing. But it being 3.6 miles out, I should have that runway in sight and it should be really distinguishable. I should be able to tell which way the, um, the aircrafts are landing. What I should have did was put the VOR in it use that as a reference to fly to. Alright, so I got the runway. I got the airport rather. Alright, 104 knots so I can drop my gear and flaps. Put some flaps in. Gear drop. Add power to hold my speed. And look like I am on a right base for some runway. So let's uh, let's fly this right base. Turn straight in. And, and you gotta worry about whether I'm clear to land because I'm the only one in the sky. Happy or divide diversity, uh, versa, but like I'm low. I think this is a versa rather than a pappy. I can't really look up there and tell, but I'm seeing red. Okay, one red, one white. So let's uh, start that descent. Hold it about there. Gear is down. Landing lights are on. One notch of flaps in. 98. 98. On the speed. It's probably a good speed for the weight of this aircraft. Getting a little fast pull that power out just a touch. That a little high. Until we flare. Okay, 
power out. One thing I heard about MSF is it's hard to to, bot, to mess up a landing. Um, I think I may have just disproved that. <laughs> but oh, let's turn here. It looks like we're on the ground. Don't know where we're going, but I really am not feeling this flight. So uh, somewhere near a tower, right? Clean up a little bit. And tack the lights on, strobes, and then the light off. Okay. Flaps are up. And, you know, I did not check my, um, my transponder while I was airborne to see if it was altitude reporting. And we're shut down anywhere. Get up against this building here. Shut down in the shade. Now that's one thing that I don't get in x is shady spots to stop and, um, and turn off the aircraft. All right, so, so power by the idle and uh, master, I think we just turn our masters off and that would kill our engine. So I'm going to turn my right engine off, leave my, let's see if it, yep, that stopped it. And now my AV master and, uh, and my, my left engine. All right, <laughs> was that interesting or what? Uh, maybe it was the what. All right, so let's uh, let's pop in the to X plane. Okay, so I have spun in at Lagrange, Georgia. And explain. Uh, this is the default. This is the the, ah, the default runway and airport for X planes. So do not, and I repeat, do not expect anything spectacular at all. Uh, you can see us there, and um. um Expecting to be able to stick with runway 31, um, which is, uh, where is runway 31? That's 13. So, I think that's 13. And that's three one at the end. Okay. So yeah. So to get there, I just cross runway. Um, what's that? Runway three twenty one. Okay. So let's uh, let's get in here and get started. All right, so let's start the same way. The first thing we'll do 
is turn our fuel on. And don't think I need those auxiliary pumps there. All right. And let's uh let's look at the uh let's put the the same gas that we had in this aircraft that we had in the other which was uh a half a tank and then we had two adults in it so we got the pilot and co-pilot that's two adults have four uh this is so elementary here but it's what we got to deal with. All right, let's close all these doors. Oh, that door's closed. I think all our doors are closed. Get rid of these chocks. Yeah, that guy's closed. Yeah, that guy's closed too. Okay. And yeah, so uh, might as well go ahead and adjust the sounds while while I'm here. Make sure yeah, the sounds look good. Okay. All right. So um, let's get started here and. Um, we want to turn our master on and our right master and right fuel pump. All right, kind of clear it. Uh, make sure that our light is turned on. So we turn that strobe on and position. Um, or nav is what I'm used to calling it and start that right engine you know one thing I didn't check was my brake but the brakes on so yeah all right do the same for the other side master fuel pump and left Right, got a good start. All right, for your pumps and go off. Now, to be honest with you, I haven't been through the uh, the checklist, so I'm not sure what at what point how to manage the fuel pumps. All right, avionics can come on and or temperatures are uh, still in the yellow um, so oil is kind of cool at the moment uh, pedo heat works and gear is up all right so let's put our flaps for takeoff and we're called for taxi um, the frequency was um, uh don't rightly remember what the frequency with the it was 12632 all right so let's um let's get a eight us Now, I do like the way that Microsoft light up this thing so that you can easily see what your radio is tuned to. All right, so we want 126.32. And get down to 3.2. And flip that in. Then come to. Lagrange Callaway weather. Wind calm. Calm. more than 10. Sky clear. Temperature 25. 2.12. Altimeter 3. Okay, I stopped it. Because he said winds were calm and they were 290 at 7 before. So I'm just wondering if I may not ought to go ahead and start global weather. Um make sure that um, make sure that the weather that I'm hearing is in fact the weather 
that's um that that it is in real life all right so just bear with me guys i'm loading global weather just one quick note when i say global weather what i actually mean is fs global real weather which uh works with uh sky max and um so i use the the fs global real weather is the weather injector and it the weather i think really is calm um so unless it changed uh which is which is entirely possible then um and we got calm weather now. Uh, but you see how I did pick up some clouds. All right, let's see. Uh, let's turn Ados back on. Uh, the two. Callaway weather. Wind calm. Visibility more than 10. Sky clear. Temperature 25. Dew point 12. Altimeter 3006. Altimeter is pretty much the same. Uh, when it's calm, though. So I can click that off. I can't do that in Microsoft Flight Simul, uh, Simul, <laughs> Simul, Microsoft, Microsoft Flight Sim, 30016. Uh, okay, so I got that in, and um, and I thought there was a backup system for the, for an altimeter, but I don't see it, so. Um, that's the um, the issue with flying so many different aircraft. All right, so I got my flap set to take off, and I am ready to taxi um, for the sake. Well, let's see. We want to put the flight plan in, and the flight plan was simple. We're here, um, and then. Uh, Then we want to go to ATL. Um, A T L. Cool, Atlanta. VR and then we want um, Peach Free to cap Papa Delta Kilo All right so that's the same flight plan that we had in FSS, uh, Microsoft Flight Sim. Um, okay. So let's go ahead and take off on 3 1 and release our brakes. Brakes are released. Uh, go ahead and turn our taxi lights on. It's a little darker than it was when we left Peachtree. Clear this way and clear that way, brake check, brakes work, steering works, and we'll follow the yellow brick road. And, and aside from the graphics, for me, this simulator is, uh, maybe it's just what I'm used to, uh, but this is the one that I do tend to fly. So, uh, so yeah, if I'm not mistaken, uh, let's see. I want to cross this runway and keep straight up. I think I saw that on the map earlier. When I brief the runways, um, we're not the only one out here because I do have traffic global running. I saw, see the labels there, so just check and make sure ain't nothing landing. 
Nope. And stay on the yellow brick road. Okay. So, yeah, the scenery is not nearly as beautiful as as Microsoft Flight Sim, but in my opinion, it works. You know, I don't know what LaGrange looked like in real life, so this works for me. If I if LaGrange was my home airport or I frequent it in real life for a while, then, you know, maybe this wouldn't work. Um, but other than my home airport, uh, since I'm not a real life pilot, then I don't get exposure to a lot of the uh, other airports. So I can live with, um, with not even a facsimile of the airport, but with what I get here. Okay, so I'm holding short. I don't see anything coming. Um, I tell folks that I'm going to take the runway. This might be a, a Delta, but I think it's a Gulf Airport. Alright, so strobe lights and come. Ugh. I never did turn them off. I normally should turn them off when I'm taxiing. Alright. Uh, landing lights and come. Tax lights and can go off and landing lights and go on. Position lights is late enough for them to stay on. And let's take the runway. I already got one set of, I already got my takeoff flap set. Gear is in the down position and stay on the yellow brick road. All right, until we get on the runway. Okay, so, um, I don't see my trims and trim the takeoff. All right. And we'll go ahead and go to full power. The frames bottomed out, but they should come back up momentarily. Yeah, they did. I don't know why they bottomed out. Squarely here. 80, rotate. Tap the brake, gear up, positive rate. So I'm rocking 27 frames per minute now, so that's good. So, alternators are not on, um, at least this alternator, okay. And, let's see, so y'all damper can come on, flight director. And I'm going to turn now on. GPS is on. Flight direct is giving me an indication of which way I should turn. And I'm going to go ahead and hit autopilot. And what I release my autopilot because I didn't put in an altitude. Let's go ahead and set that up right quick. 35. All right, and and let's 
be kind of looking for my looking at direction from my flight director. Um, let's see now. I want to go vertical speed and then I want to go nose up. I see the buttons, but I am going to engage the autopilot and nose up and with 12 to get to 35 our S is selected 1200 feet per minute vertical speed um, and let's go back to GPS all right so I know now that I am flying my GPS course, which I had to hand fly most of this in Microsoft Flight Sim. Okay, landing light come off, and flaps are way overdue. Power back a little. In fact, I see I'm, I was in the yellow. Keep coming back until I get my RPMs out of the yellow. And as you can see, my oil temperature did go up. Yeah. I knew it would, which is why I didn't monitor it. And I'm holding it steady at 35. And I'm actually about 20 knots faster in, in this airplane than I was in the in the MS in the flight simulator 60 the uh, DA62. All right, so. See what we looking like. We are hauling donkey. The other thing that I didn't do, I don't think I put in the the, the extra passenger. But yeah, I did. Co-pilot. Um, I didn't have a um, I didn't have a way to put in to actually adjust, I don't have a way to actually adjust the weight of the co-pilot unless I, unless I do it in the X-plane weight and balance screen. And even then, I can't really adjust it. Okay. So, fuel is managed automatically. Good, so I don't have to worry about switching tanks. And um, this is my cabin. I do do frost 
rod or trim. And as we approach Atlanta, of course, there's going to be a whole bunch of traffic. So if the labels get too distracting, then I'll just simply turn them off and try to see and avoid traffic as, as if I would in real life, of course. I would have to get permission to enter the Bravo and all of that stuff, but we're foregoing that. We're just flying the two DA62s to kind of get a comparison. Um, and so far, to be honest with you, I am preferring the, the X-Plane version. However, but not quite apples to apples because this is a payware version of the DA62, whereas the x -Plane version was, uh, is the default version. And uh, at this point, even x -Plane's default aircraft are really, really good aircraft. Um, so I'm not going to make any bones about, um, about it not being, uh, the default aircraft, um, it, usually the X-Plane default aircraft fly just as good as the payware aircraft, um, some of the features. Uh, may not work um, like here the, the the fuse panel the fuse buses are modeled so um, I do have to consider if I get a failure I do have to consider checking the fuel boxes checking the fuses Whereas on a default aircraft, it, you know, I'm not probably not going to get a fuse pop because it's not modeled, so I can't push it back in. Uh, that kind of stuff, you know. But um, but flying it, uh, you know, since they both, since we're X plane, they don't use lookups that the developer or fields, um, well, they don't fully use lookups that the developer is programming, but they use them. Um, blade theory, the, the blade element theory technology, then the wind generally works on the wings um, the same, as long as the wings are, are similar are the same. Does that make sense? Um, so, excuse me, guys. Okay, I hate it when the uh, telephone Ooh. just dropped the phone. I hate it when the phone rings during a session here. And so let me uh, go ahead and put it on vibrate. <laughs> okay. So I can see that Hartsville has quite a bit of traffic. Um, several aircraft. Uh, on approach, several departing, couple holding, let's see, one aircraft is holding, uh, and a couple aircraft in, in crews, a uh, few in crews, three in crews, four in crews. So, 
So, we are 21 nautical miles from Atlanta. So, I don't have to worry about, um, how should I say, I don't have to worry about much at the moment. Um, the approach patterns for the heavy jets look like it, they're about um, 1,300 feet. And and I'm at 35, so I should have decent separation as I go over the airport. So it is getting dark in Atlanta. clouds and the clouds are generated by SkyMax um, they are not the best clouds but in my opinion they're doable but <laughs> uh, in my opinion X-Plane clouds was sort of doable um, in VFR you don't, I don't want to fly through them so but I remember when I first started simming uh, I think that was version 11.1 or something maybe 11.2 um, and the clouds just looked like <laughs> looked like they were scissoring, scissoring by it in all kinds of directions really disorientate since I uh, have been using Skymax I haven't seen that in years now uh, but I suspect that the default version still has that effect So if this was a real life flight, the other than following checklists a lot closer and and uh, and managing heat and other things, the biggest thing that I would be doing differently that I'm doing now is listening for my call sign and making sure that I was cleared into the Bravo. Um, and and hopefully we'll have some sort of transition through the Bravo airspace over Hartsfield to get to Peachtree to Cab. So as you can see we have reached the suburbs of Atlanta and explain take a take a peek at them from the outside now this I think is default Uh, maybe out of been over a, over a towel. Yeah, I do have a towel down there. Let's look at it. So yeah. So you can see here is the roof of a building and then X plane has put auto during trees on the roof of the building. Uh, 
so. So X Plane's auto gen generator is going to put the, the, the auto gen where it wants it, weapon, regardless. Alright, so the towels are starting to look distracting, so let's go ahead and turn them off. Um, and let's get a little bit closer so that we can see and avoid traffic. Alright, so I do see traffic right here. And he looks like he might be going away from me. So let's see if we get that top down a little bit. Alright, there's another piece of traffic. And there's all kinds of traffic out there. I just can't see it from, you know, from the distance. Um, with X-Plane, traffic literally got to be within three or four miles of you for you to see it. Um, I don't not sure it's like that in real life. Could be. I'm not, not sure. So this is hard still. And I can see traffic here, traffic over here, so traffic there, so I know, okay, I'm turning toward, towards Peachtree, so I know I'm not in the sky alone. Let's cycle through the labels, and again, as long as they are not within three plus miles of me, then I'm not going to see them. Um, I just see the labels. Okay, so I can start thinking about getting down. So let's go ahead and reduce the 2,000. Well, let's get over the city. Let's get past the city. Actually, once we pass the city, we want to start our descent. I think, um, let's see, so that's 2,000. And let's descend at an easy, nice five. Um, Five hundred feet per minute. Let's pull our speed back to the yellow. Pull our prop back to lower our speed.
All right, so I see my airport already. Got it in sight. And it is this guy here. So I am going to slow down significantly here. How far out am I? Seven miles, so I'm going to go ahead and turn my landing lights on and slow down enough to drop my gear. So I can drop my gear at 162. So I can drop my gear any time. So I'm going to use that great lag to drag. And I'm going to take the aircraft and I'm going to fly straight in here. I really should get an ATIS and land on the um, land on the right yep, on the right field. See Stone Mount in the back there. Okay. So let's put in a notch of flaps. And that gives me a great ballooning effect. I see the the uh, Versi and I can't tell looks like I, I'm a little low so I'm a whole 1700 until I get a white light um, I am also slow all right got a white light so that's uh, Start a descent. All right, we still got another notch of flaps that we can add. But we're at 93 knots. I'm going to add the last notch of flaps to slow her on down. She balloons up. Pour that power. get her back on this glass a little bit in real life I think this might be at this point a go around get it trimmed yeah this would definitely be a go around looking at my um, windsock look like I got a nice cross man Track that middle, middle line. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Flare. Power out. And we're down. And in spite of everything, I was met. I managed to salvage that landing. All right. So exit runway when able. I think I am able. All right, clean up. 
FLTT flaps. Lights. Transition lights stay on. Nothing's coming. I think this is look like the same place I got off in Microsoft Flight Sim. us off we went here and went straight across okay so we did flaps lights transponder and trim uh transponder uh, we never did we never even turned the transponder on there's the tower and trim um, all right so go over here and park shut down Engine is down and fuel pump is off. Master is off, left engine is down. Lights and master. All right, so that's that car is gonna probably run right through me as opposed to going around me uh, whew. so maybe you can see why I tend to fly um, X-Plane over Microsoft Flight Simulator anyway guys I hope you enjoyed it um, if you like it and, and would like me to do more of these type flights then let me know in the comments um until next time y'all come back now dear yeah.